Well, welcome once again, everyone, to Aussie Tech Heads. This is episode 267, and uh, we hope w it finds you well. It's been a bit wet up and down the East Coast, I think, and I've been reading the chat already in the lounge. It's chat aplenty, and they're all saying that it's wet, it's windy, it's gusty, it's, you know, I don't know what's, what's going on. But anyway, welcome wherever you are, and I hope the weather's doing fine. Hope it's ready. Hope it's all right for uh, cricket tomorrow. Tomorrow the cricket starts up again in Hobart, so let's hope that that's all right. And also, I'm going out on Saturday night, so let's hope it doesn't rain. Going to a concert, I think Foo Fighters up there at uh, Sunny Carrara, so let's hope I don't get rained on. So, welcome, Eric. How are you doing? Good evening, all, and it is pouring. It is pouring in Sydney, is it? I oh, actually just stopped. I just looked out the window and uh, just stopped. Oh, but right. it was pouring. It oh. has been raining all week. And did you know that viewers can watch the recorded video of Aussie Tech Heads uh, on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash The Secret Hub. They can also join us live in the lounge like so many people have right now, live.thesecrethub.com, Thursday night, 7.30, from 7.30 Queensland time. Uh, it's 8.30 from uh, eastern southern states. Yeah. Also, Shoutcast, find us on the Shoutcast system if you want to listen to audio only. Uh, we've got some good things happening with the audio only coming up very soon. Uh, Will's not here again tonight. He's still got an injured back. Um, he's having some bone therapy or something, so God knows what that entails. But um, that sounds pretty crazy. So he's probably eating a mango or two while he's doing it. Sounds like the thing to do. And uh, But he's um, he's looking into a... a uh, sort of like a live audio stream 24 7 so we'll have a we'll have a go with that some good things coming there uh also the paper the magazine that comes out twice a day paper.aussietechheads.au and uh and a big uh thank you to also also to the show that what pre comes pre rolls the uh live recording of aussie tech it's tech webcast.info thanks brad and the guys down there all right eric what's been happening this week you've got your little eye mics or ginger mics or whatever you want to call them <laughs> what you got Gun gunja I don't, gunja. <laughs> I don't know what what are they that you have you've got bloody gingy what are they um, well i, I ordered griffin. i griffin. ordered two i griffin Griffin, that's what you meant. Yeah. Griffin eye mics in order to get the mix minus and all that bad audio, you know, feedback, uh, echo, um, you know, single duplex. Yep. Um, out of the system. So far, it seems to be working, but I've just discovered that I'm only coming out on one channel, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's an adapter on my auxiliary setting which i which is a two dollar fix so that's not a problem so that's no good that's no that's not bad you are actually coming through on both channels uh for the, the listeners tonight so that as long as as long as we keep the listeners happy uh we're happy so but we will fix that we want to hear eric in stereo <laughs> indeed you do that's right now uh what else has been going on oh look i turned my computer on today nothing happened that's uh that was also no good i thought oh. hello there might not be a show tonight. I had to take it all apart. Look, it didn't come out of its sleep. Um, initially, I thought I had flat batteries in the keyboard, had flat batteries in the mouse or something, put new batteries everywhere, still nothing. Uh, yeah, I was, I was panicking, so I took the video card out. Uh, uh, nothing, still panicking. <laughs> <laughs> took the hard drive out, uh, still panicking. And so anyway, I thought, right, this thing obviously wants me to take the whole thing out and open it up. So I took the whole thing out from its little case, little little hidey hole from where it is, and I put it yep. over on my bench, put it over on the bench and took it apart and just jiggered everything around as you do, and it just all came back on. So I don't know. I don't know. But it's one of those things. That's a weird. That's very weird. Look, it has a, it had a trouble coming out of sleep. Because um, I could, t I, I powered it off like with the switch, like you know how you hold it in for four seconds and it goes off. So I did that. But when I turned it back on, it came back on, but it wasn't going through that post boot up cycle. It sort of just came back on, and you could hear it whirring. It wasn't on on. It just came on blank screens and everything. So I thought, well, this why isn't this not going through the its post? I'm thinking, geez, motherboard, has something gone wrong here? There's no beeps, and there wasn't even beeps when I took the video card out. So oh, geez, I was starting to starting to get a bit crazy but anyway it's all back to run so i don't know what the problem was i took the video card out hooked the hooked the video card uh, hooked the monitor another monitor up to the inboard video and she posted so it was good so we're here we made it we made it jeez yes. you were just you were about to you were thinking oh there's another thousand bucks oh i wasn't going to be happy <laughs> in my mind going through my mind was how long have i had this board is it still under warranty i'm, I'm sure it is yeah i wasn't i wasn't the happiest camper in the world at the at the 
this morning, but and because obviously I unplugged everything, I had to plug everything back in, and you know I'm in a tight spot, and things just reach, and when you pull the computer out, all the some of the leashes go plonk straight out, you know they just pull straight out. So yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a happy morning, but uh, look, it took about probably 45 minutes out of me day, so that's not too bad after all, not too bad after all. Um, what else have we got going? We're going to do some news, I reckon. Reckon we, we can should. do some news. All right. Do some news. Um, what do you want to start with, my friend? All right. Well, I suppose. Look, I've started at the top. I can start off the top with Android. Oh, can I tell you an Android story? Look, I please, found, please I, do. I was uh, out. I went to Australia Zoo last Friday, so I thought, okay, I'll take my phone, obviously, and I'll take the iPad because uh, Kim. How, how, how long a drive is that? That would be about one and a half hours. Okay. Up All to right. up to the sunny coast. Uh, from here, and so we went up, and I thought I'd take the iPad. Kim was going to drive, so I thought this is uh, this would be good. I, you know, be able to just tether the iPad, you know, blah blah blah. You, you tether the phone to the iPad, and I'll be right. Ah, uh, couldn't get nothing. The phone was oh. not working, and I was just oh, no internet, no nothing. And I think I, I even tweeted because every every ten seconds, my little uh, Hootsuite app was going like this, saying um, you know, message failed, message failed. So all morning it was down. Like the whole morning, I got Kim's iPhone, no problems at all. It was just snap, 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 snap. So anyway. Yeah, I've, easy, I've, easy. I figured out what the problem is. And maybe I've been... I'll, cut, t- no. I'll stop you right there. I know what the problem is. You've got the wrong phone. No, I think I think the problem is now it could be cast... We, I could have been casting aspersions on Samsung and uh, and Android, but I think it's the, it's the carrier because... Uh, I got onto Whirlpool when it finally came up, and apparently all over the country on that day, people are blowing that uh, the Virgin network was down. And I mean, oh, you're with Virgin, oh, yeah. geez. So it's crazy. Well, so, you, yeah, God, you could start your own network and run it better than that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put a microwave dish on the roof and just stream from here. <laughs> just oh, you know, just sh- network shocking. up. Yeah. So, um, but that's the way. Oh, I'm, I'm sitting a bit. There, how's that? Yeah, well, my, Milo's just saying he hates virgins. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, Optus is probably, you know, you, you got to... And, he, and he's now with Ooptus. With Ooptus? Oh, my oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so, oops. So, uh, Milo, Oop. yes. <laughs> Milo's in the lounge, take part in the lounge, and uh, we can read what you're saying. So, um, yeah, if you've got anything interesting to say, put it in there. All right, so, yeah, well, Android, talking about Android. So, anyway, the, uh, look... The network came back up. The phone was snappy, so it's the network. It's the network, and I'm looking into it. I'm I'm uh, logging. I'm on the log, you know, the log trail, and uh, I'm going right. to do something with the logs. So, all right. So, but anyway, speaking of Android, 10 billion Android market downloads. Now that's a few, isn't it? Yep, six billion viruses. Oh, <laughs> you're you're so critical. I think. <laughs> I think look, <laughs> I'm honest. I'm just straight down the line. No, nah, look, I think look, there is probably issues out there with things like that. But um, look, after now that I think I've narrowed my problems down to the network, uh, I'm going to concentrate on that. But um, but anyway, uh, but anyway, but 10 billion Android market downloads, like that's that's a fair bit. So obviously, it's working for some people. Obviously. Yeah, but you know what? No one's making any money on Android. Yeah, well, the past week, well, well, not at the moment. So it doesn't, they can they can download all they want, but you know, developers are still flocking to the platforms that, and I'm not mentioning any names, the platforms that actually they make money. I mean, developers need to get paid. Mm. Well, I think uh, I think when Windows App Marketplace comes out, I think that's going to be probably rated up there as one of the best, isn't it, for return to developers? Be- yes, because they've got a captive market. Absolutely. Mm. So, so anyway, this past weekend, thanks to Android users around the world, the one, the what was it, the 10 billion Android apps? That's just huge. Exceeded the, uh, uh, hit the 10 billion mark with a growth rate of apparently one billion app downloads per month. That is, yeah, insane. I don't believe it. That's insane. I'm, I'm skeptic. I'm skeptical of that figure. Well, I've downloaded my apps 10 times, so. <laughs> well, they're probably that's right. They're probably counting them, whereas yeah. Apple only counts. You know, if you download an app and then you delete it by accident and download it again, it's only counted as one. Mm. But uh, starting last Tuesday, which is Tuesday this week, just gone, so uh, for the next 10 days, there is a 10 cent app day of different apps each day. So you want to, if you if you've got an Android device, you want to go and have a bit of a 
get your teeth into that. Let me see if I've got a link here. Because, um, hang on, will we... Oh, redirect notice. What's going on there? But anyway, um, I, I did have a link all ready to set and go, but it's not going to... Here we go. Have a look at this one. The Android Marketplace. So today, you can get now the Air Sync for Double Twist, 10 cents. You can get Reckless Racing Play, 10 cents. Christmas HD, 10 cents, and a few more. Beautiful widgets for 10 cents. So every day, there's going to be some 10 cent uh, apps on offer. So get your little fingers into that if you like Android. Now, also, while we're speaking with apps, apps are taking over. Major four app stores will hit 1 million apps in total. So that means 1 million different apps are out there between the... Oh, I don't know if they'll be different. There'll be Facebook on all four platforms. Yeah. Well, that's, For example, but, Twitter. Oh, so you wouldn't call that an app? I, I wonder if they're calling that an app. Like a different well, they're app, calling it an app, but you app. wouldn't say that there's a million different apps because some apps are duplicated in, um, yeah, I know in what you're all four, four areas. Yeah, but app stores for iOS, Android, BlackBerry and Windows Phone are on track to hit the one million titles overall. Oh, one million... Who knows? With today's count reaching 996,303. Now, that's an average of 2,000 new apps uh, hitting the four p platforms each day. The one million app milestone is expected to be reached sometime this week. So it's, it is a big achievement. Some are calling the software boom the fastest growing consumer segment in the history of commerce. Well, it is pretty fast. Uh, Apple is in the lead with 594,000-odd apps. Uh, Android, 322,000. BlackBerry, 43,000-odd. Why would, why would you be doing BlackBerry? What's going on there? Well, and the sad thing about BlackBerry is they've been around for 12, 10 or 12 years, and they've still only got 43,000 apps. What's yeah. going on? Yeah, and only just beating last Idiots. place, <laughs> Windows Phone Marketplace, who are offering 35,000. But, but you know, like Windows hasn't probably launched there. Well, this is the thing. They've been out for 12 years and they've got 43,000 out. Windows Phone isn't even fully released yet in with proper with the Windows 8, new Windows 8 and, and the whole Metro interface that they're coming out with with Nokia and all that sort of thing. And, they've, they're, and they're just behind them. Yeah. And they've only been going 12 months. Yeah. <laughs> so, so well done, BlackBerry. <laughs> what a way not to sit on your, uh, on your ass on your and hands. do nothing. Yeah, well, look, I think they, they just took everything for granted, didn't they? I think they were probably... They Riding high, iPhone sort of stunned everyone, like and everyone, and um, that's what happens. And Android, Android Land, Australia's Australia opens world first Android store in Melbourne. Yeah, get a load of that one. It's a bit of an Android. Yeah, well, just news um, um, tonight. any any people out there who want to go um, shopping for cheap leases, just walk past that store in about twelve months. <laughs> but it's the Telstra store. It'll have a full lease sign on it. <laughs> Telstra has opened what it claims to be the f the world's first dedicated Android store. There, well, Android store, there you go. It's a uh, 154 square meter space with uh, within its Burke Street, Melbourne Telstra outlet. So if you're in Melbourne, go and check it out. Some of the pictures look pretty good, look pretty groovy. Like you just go and check it out, even if you didn't like uh, the platform. Uh, you've you know they, it looks pretty futuristic in there. The store, yeah, it does. It does. The store will feature the latest Android phones and tablets uh, so you can have a play with them. An interactive spaceship zone lets shoppers play with Google Earth and angry birds on a giant screen. Oh, that'd be all right. And a hope you can find some Telstra staff without waiting an hour on the phone. <laughs> yeah. And a uh, play zone including te skill testers, clown games and Google Books virtual library. What, what do they call their genius bar? What do they call, what are, what do they call their equivalent genius bar people? Um, Google.com. <laughs> that's probably where they tell you to go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Hey, buddy, I've got a problem with, uh, you know, whatever it is, um, you know, nut job sandwich. Mm. And they say, well, Google it. Google it. That's right. Could you ever I'll had, see you later. Have Next, you, please. Have you ever had people ask you questions and you think, like they're simple questions, and you think, you can answer this. Well, why haven't you Googled it yourself? Like everyone gets Look, I see that on Twitter all the time. And mm. some of the people I follow, and hate to say this, but a lot of these dumbass questions are coming from people in Melbourne. Mm. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if it's the weather or something down there. <laughs> and say, so, you know, where could I find this? Whatever. I'm thinking, Google it. Google it. But there's a, I don't know. Dumbass. You, I don't know if you've seen uh, the Google page, which I'll, I'll show you. Um, uh, what, was it, what was it called? Just, just Google it or something. And what it does, oh, let me Google that for you. 
That's what it is. It's yes, L- right. Yeah, L M G T F Y dot com. Let me Google that for you. So what happens is you bring the page up, and you put in um, say say you got a question about uh, hard disk space in space. <laughs> <laughs> Hard disk crash, and then type you type your question in, and then click on a button. So I think you go like that, and you get this little link down here. So you copy the little link, and you send that to the person that's asking you the question. And what happens is that the Google page comes up, and then your the query that they've asked you is typed in, and then it animates it all with hitting the Google search button, and then it actually gives you the result. <laughs> So you know what? I wouldn't even I wouldn't even do that for him. How freaking lazy! I do. You're still doing the work. No way. I do that. No way. <laughs> yeah, but I just reply. Google it yourself, you <laughs> dumbass. I I I'd give that to my sister all the time. Let me Google that for you. <laughs> she has oh, she God. has stopped asking questions. So oh, it's been good. God. Oh, she had a problem with a printer. Now this is a good this is a good way this is a good uh, place to start. If anyone's got problems with their hardware, she's had a problem for a week, right? And I said, all right, I can't. I'll get there tomorrow. I was going out Friday. I said, look, I'll go out tomorrow and fix it for you, or have a look at it anyway. So all through the week, I'm going like, okay. I said, have you uninstalled it? Reinstalled the driver? Yes. Um, okay. What else have you done? Have you done a self test? Yes. Have you have you done all this? Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, she's on the phone to me this morning, and I said. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm coming out tomorrow. And she goes, yeah, well, what do you reckon's wrong with it? I said, how would I know? Like, how the hell would I know without seeing it? And anyway, um, <laughs> something happened and she, and she said, um, she goes, okay, she goes, I've even, I've unplugged it, I've done everything. And I said, all right, well, we'll unplug it now. So she unplugs it. Nothing happened. And I'm going, okay, plug it back in. Nothing happened. And I went, why isn't it going, you know, bum, bum, when you plug something in? So she goes, yep. and, and she, she twigged as well as I did. I said, is it plugged into the computer? And it wasn't plugged into the computer. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so Love you. Love you all. That's a good place for you guys to start. If you've got a problem, make sure it's plugged in. <laughs> because you know, 80% of computer-related problems are user issues. Yeah, user stupidity, Yeah, I well, would call it. Well, user user issues yeah because if you that, go on a, a, the you know the australian personal computer apc yes right if you get that magazine every now and again there's a section in the front that says you know stories of it stupidity and all these um what you call it it guys write in and say oh yeah, yes. at work today this happened blah blah, blah. and the stories you hear Yes. Jesus, you should round them up, put them in the room and shut the door and throw the key away. Yeah, Fair income. It's stories, I think, different people from different help desks write in. Probably, yes, prob- correct. Yeah, yeah. Pro- probably oh, anonymously. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. And so, yeah, some of them are pretty... <laughs> Some of them are pretty funny. Some of you have to think, geez, are they made up or what? But some of them, yeah, they're pretty funny. But anyway, Dumbass. just make sure okay. it's not, that's just not something simple. Now, back, being we're still on the Google thing, Eric mm. Smith, Smith at Le Web in France is on at the moment, and he's saying that Android is ahead of the iPhone. Google chairman Eric Smith spoke yesterday at Le Web in Paris, and now the entire interview is on YouTube. There's a link there for you on the, on the notes, Glenn, if you want to. You it's a YouTube link if you want to play it. You can if you want, or the uh, lounge and the listeners can just go to the show notes and get that. Link. I'll have a look at it. Um, the hour-long interview, I'm not going to, you know, it's an hour-long interview, so I'm not going to play it here, is punctuated with bon mots, meaning, you know, bold statements. Mm. Um, like, it is much easier to start a revolution, but it is harder to finish it. So he's having a dig at Apple, yeah, right? Yeah. If you don't have time to watch the whole thing, fast forward to around the 37-minute mark, is when Smith starts to get feisty. Our Android is ahead of the iPhone now, he says, based on unit volume. Price is lower more vendors, it's free. About 39 minutes in, he makes the startling prediction. Listen to this. <laughs> By the summer of 2012, summer US, northern summer, which is June, mm. six months away, the majority of the televisions you will see will have Google TV embedded in it. Now... I thought they had issues. A, I thought they had issues with Google TV. But yeah, bingo. Exactly. Mm. Do you know, a similar strategy to what we did with Android. The price is free from Google, so you're only paying for the television. Do you know who's going to 
I don't know. Oh, look, I don't, this is the bold tip. I don't know if you want to call it a tip, but from what I'm reading, I think maybe the person that's going to get there first could be Microsoft. Um, I'm, I think I wouldn't mind putting an each way bet on that either. Yeah, because they're bringing their new platform out. What is it? This next week or something, or whenever it is soon. The, the well, Xbox. yes, very soon. Yeah, um, I'm, actually, I'm surprised that they didn't release it earlier because of the, for the Christmas run in because. I'll tell you what they've got going for them, and a lot of people might agree with me on this, that once they put that software, and look, it's, but the software isn't my cup of tea, but a lot of people do like it. There's no doubt about it. It's a, it's a market that's not going to be unnoticed. Hmm. Um, a lot of people do like the software on the Windows phone. Now, they start putting that on Nokia's, and Nokia have always made really nice hardware. Always. Hmm. Always made nice hardware. The cameras on Nokia are probably the best cameras in the world as far as phone cameras go yeah, yeah. with their um, their Carl Zeiss lens on it. And right. I've always, before I had an iPhone, I had Nokia's all the time. And their cameras and their video recording on it was second to none. Now, you put those two together plus the App Store, hey, come on. Hmm. Yeah, that's look- that's going to that's gonna take off. Yeah, I, I think there's... Some- and I'm an Apple fan, but yeah. I'm being objective. I think there's a, uh, a good chance that the Windows 8 cross cross platform operating system is you know cr- phones um xbox or and you know not xbox as a whole but but anyway but as i was getting back to with xbox and the tv side of things i reckon what's going to come what's coming out is you can control your tv with the with the wave gestures with the connect and voice yeah. commands as well so yeah. you know they get on board because google's that, got that it, might be a little that might be a little bit hard harder than harder than what it sounds like but it's there mm. you know and i'm sure over time, they'll modify and improve that because of the feedback they're getting, but it's there. It's a start. Google's got nothing. Mm. Well, you look at uh, Windows 8, because I did have a story about Windows 8, and I'm sorry I couldn't get that link up. Um, there was some issue with accessing the show notes. But anyway, we'll, um, we'll forge on. But, uh, the, but Windows 8, like you can, you can download a development copy today if you wanted to. Yes. Now, well, I've got one. I've got, look, I don't like it. Well, um, it's probably a bit clunky. On a, on a laptop. On a laptop. Yep. But I think it will be. I think it'll work well on a tablet. Yes. Yes. Right. And what about a desktop? So, well, is are you including desktop with laptop? Uh, yeah. Well, when I say laptop, I mean I mean you know like a physical PC with a keyboard. Mm. Um, I've got it on my netbook, and look, it's it's fast. You can click on it, and you can go straight. You can bypass that the um you know the the tiled screen. Right. Right. Because on the tablet, it'll have a tiled screen, and on the when you log into when you log into it on a laptop or a desktop, you get that same tiled screen. Right. And to, to get out of that, you just press escape. Oh, okay. And then what you, you're or, in... Or there's a little tile here that says desktop and you click that and you go desktop and it looks exactly like Windows 7. Right, right. Um, and, and off you go. Hmm. Um, it is it is fast and it's very, very lightweight. Like Windows 7, there's no garbage in there. There's no, yeah. you know, but I still, I do believe they should do what Apple's done and have one operating system for tablets and one operating system for desktops. Hmm. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's what they're. Yeah, I don't know what they're trying to do, but they're trying to. Well, they're trying to make it look the same across the the devices yeah, anyway, which is Apple yes, has done the same yeah. thing. They're trying to get that uniformity going. And look, and I understand mm. that because they've been so fragmented in the past. Um, I think they're trying so hard to compete with Apple that I think they're missing the point. Yeah, so a little bit. So the Windows 8 developer preview. It's a public build. It's around three and a half gig. So if you want to have a bit of a, a squiz, you can go to the uh, – just Google it, I suppose, or let me Google that for yep. you. <laughs> just go to Microsoft.com and search for Windows 8. Yeah. Um, but if you want if you want to, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly read the address out. It's not too long. msdn.microsoft.com forward slash en hyphen us forward slash windows forward slash home. Uh, yeah, so it is there. Microsoft has announced that the public beta version, which will be the actual beta version, not the developer version, it will be coming out in February. It will be, um, it will be available for download in February. So that would be worth probably having a bit of a look at. You'd, you'd download oh, that yeah, again? It, it would be, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I will download it. I'll have a look at it. I'll, I'll put it over the top of the developer preview I've got now mm. and um, we'll see how we go. Yeah, so as we're talking about that, that splash screen or the start screen or whatever you want to call it with all the tiles on it, now that apparently is going to be known as Metro. So yeah, Met- Metro UI. That's right, Metro UI. It's Microsoft's name for the new interface that greets you when you first boot into Windows 8. Now programs are represented by tiles that not only launch programs, which are all designed to run full screen, but are live. 
So the actual tiles. Um, yeah, they move. The weather moves. Mm. The stock market moves. That's right. Uh, any Twitter feeds might scroll across there. Yes. So any. Um, mm. That's right. Any tile that can support information this way takes advantage of it, such as the news feeds and, and so forth, as Eric just mentioned. Uh, Metro apps themselves are quite different from Windows apps. They're not going to be the same. Windows 8 is backwards compatible, but the Metro apps are not. So I right. uh, have to keep that in mind. But it doesn't matter anyway, does it? Who cares really? Backwards compatible. Like how, how far back does Windows want to backwards compatible? Uh, I think things? it's only going to go back to um, Windows 7, possibly Vista. Oh, to go back but things to XP. Like, look, for example, it, um, Microsoft Word and Outlook and Excel, the latest one, which I've got on the, on the netbook, 2010, does not work on Windows 8. Right. And what was that? The my office, the office suite. Oh, okay, and what happened? The latest you... office suite, two thousand, doesn't work. Does it just what crash, or does it, it just say... says this? No, it just says this is not compatible with your operating system. Yeah, right. They'll look so on... I think they, what they're going to do, you know, how you and they come out with an office suite, it'll probably be called Office two thousand and twelve. Yep. Um, you'll be able to open two thousand and ten documents. Yes. But you won't yep. be able to run a two thousand and ten suite. Oh, they'll they'll put a little push, a little patch through. Oh, look, that, look that, no, I don't reckon they will. I think they're, 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 they're going – they've always sort of tried to – for many, many years, the, you know, decades, they've always hung on to legacy stuff. And it, I think it has slowed their innovation because they're always supporting – you know, they're still supporting XP, you know, yeah, for God's yeah. sake. I it's, think they're going to stop doing that like Apple does. Upgrade or bad luck. Yeah. You know, for example, they don't support Tiger now. Apple doesn't support Tiger, which you've mm. got running on one of your systems there. Yes. It's just all tough and – Tough noogies. Yeah. That's how Microsoft going to go. And that's the only way they're going to remain competitive. And I think it's the right move. Mm. And not only does Apple not support the Tiger, but if I tried to download Chrome, you can't, even, you can't download Chrome for Tiger or Power PCs. And you can't download, uh, update your Firefox. So it's, it's done. That's get, it. It's, it's done. It's, it's, it, you're stuck in a time warp. It, it's, it's getting the um, moss on it. It's slowly turning into a brick. But, um, yep. But, uh, look, I think that 2010 will work on 8. It has to. I don't think they'd be that rude, and especially mm. when they're... No, well, no, I think they will, and I'll tell you why. I think they're going to come out with an office suite, but everyone's going, oh, I don't want to have to upgrade. It cost me 400 bucks. But I think the kicker will be Office 2012, not compatible, can only run on Windows 8, but we're going to charge you $99. That's what I reckon they'll do. And everyone will go, yeah, sweet, no worries. I'll, I'll upgrade to that. <laughs> well, maybe. But then that defeats their – that sort of uh, contradicts their statement that it's going to be backwards compatible with current Windows Yeah, programs. but the, doc, the, the, the documents might be – you know, the opening oh, of documents might be backwards compatible. Oh, okay. Compatible. I see what you're saying. Yeah, saying. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So the, the Metro apps are at source web apps. And for Metro itself, it's powered by Internet Explorer 10. And the apps can be programmed uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and apparently fully HTML5 capable. Um, yep, they're going off Flash. Everyone's off Flash. Oh, good. Goodbye, Flash. You're dead in the water. Thank God. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Every restaurant one, in the, one, every restaurant in the world's gonna have to redo their bloody <laughs> websites now. One good thing that Steve did, he killed off Flash. He wasn't here to see oh, it, but uh, <laughs> he, he'd, he'd be he'd be clapping. Uh, the other what oh, a memory memory hog that piece of crap is. Yeah, the uh, other difference uh, between the apps and the Metro apps is that uh, you'll only be able to get the Metro apps through the Windows Store. Now, Microsoft hasn't included the Windows Store in the preview release. Uh, Microsoft is ex ex uh, not just the Windows Phone, blah, blah, blah. as soon as the, the dashboard is going to be available for the 360, as we've said, it's not just about unification of design, it also ties into Microsoft's goal of providing a uniform experience for personal settings and data. So that's interesting. So, mm. you, you, you know, your settings and that will just, just, just buzz across everything. So that's yep. good. That's yep. good. Well, they're going, they're going the Apple route. It's just, you know, you yes. download, you want an app, you've got to go to the store, download it on your computer. If you lose it, you need to install it again, just click, you can get it again. No problem. You'll never lose it. If you lose a disc, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's there. And do your Audible books uh, go across your systems? I suppose they would if they were in yes. iTunes, wouldn't they? Yes. Hmm. So, um, so yep. di did you come across any Audible things this week or you... I'm, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> yes, I did come across some Audible things this week, and so, I have it here. So audible.com, uh, go there, get, get yourself some uh, Audible loving, Audible book loving. And most of the time, there's a lot of books that are actually read by the 
the person that wrote them, the author. And there's a lot that are actually narrated by a third party, which are just as good, like that Steve Jobs' um, book written by Walter Isaacson and, and narrated by someone else. <laughs> so that's good as well. <laughs> um, oh, I'm, still, I'm nearly up to Chapter 3, by the way. Oh, so you're all, you're going all right then? Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, yeah, so if you want to get a free Audible book or a free credit, you go to aussietechheads.com.au website, click on the Audible link, sign up through that, please, and you'll get a free credit, and then you can, um, yeah, have a look. And I'll oh, listen, by the way, I'll give you all a sneak preview of the new web page. There's nearly, well, not wouldn't say nearly finished, but the, the front page is nearly finished, and then I'm just going to start working on the back stuff. But anyway, anyway, not to not to digress off off the subject, uh, Eric. What, what have you what have you got? All right, on? here we go. Here we go. It's um, it's called um, Hughes. The where is it? I've lost it now. The definitive biography of the first American billionaire. Oh yeah. I like. I've I've read this book, um, the hard copy copy of this. Yep. A while back, and I found this today in in audio form, and it basically. So, you know, the guy was a nut job, but a very clever nut job at that. Um, and the publisher summary, I'll just read a short bit, then I'll play the, the, the grab. Howard Hughes would have hated this book because he never wanted the truth to be told. As the man who knew Hughes best for 17 years and to whom he referred publicly as his alter ego, I, he says, I now believe the entire story has been told. And his alter ego being Robert Mack. Mahu, Mahu. So what does this mean? Howard Hughes. What, what is that? What is what? So he went by the name of someone else as well. He had another name. No, 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 no. He had a friend that he believed to be his alter ego. Oh, okay, basically. right. And what? Just uh, someone that knew him best. And just sorry, just quickly, what was the name of the book? Because I just went to the audible. dot com site. And there's, there's, there's a couple of titles. The, with Devi- the, the definitive biography of the first American billionaire. Oh yes, I see it. Yes, thank you. And um, yeah, so how long? When was he? When was he on the planet? How long ago? He was on a planet some while, oh, quite a while ago. He died. Oh, jeez, he died a long time ago. Um, so oh, it would have been. He died, I think, a very old man in the sixties or seventies. Oh, okay, yeah, right, right. So Howard um, Hughes. Yeah, so newly uncovered personal letters and one hundred ten thousand pages of sealed court testimony, recently declassified FBI files. This book sounds like it's got it all. It's got yeah, it all. It's got it all. Got it all. He was a playboy whose sexual exploits with Hollywood stars were legendary. He was a man without compassion, an entrepreneur without ethics, an explorer without maps, and ultimately <laughs> an eccentric trapped by his own insanity, sealed off from reality, who died a lonely and until now mysterious death. Oh, that's no good. No. Mm. And did you have a little excerpt? Yes, I do. And um, you just tell me if this is coming through. It should come through. Has it started? Can you hear that? <laughs> no. You oh. can't hear that? No. Hang How? on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Good, old Howard. Good old Howard. It was early evening at the Acapulco Princess Hotel, a time when the sun had lost its heat. Can you hear that? Yep. Yep and push shadows of palm trees and hibiscus across the manicured lawns of the most expensive resort in Mexico. At the El Grado pool bar, a trio of tanned women in brightly colored bikinis ordered margaritas, acutely aware that they were being ogled by a nearby group of fat, aging businessmen who were in the coastal city to attend a convention of sporting goods manufacturers. They were the kind of women that would have appealed to Howard Robard Hughes on another day in another time. Not now, however. At age 70, weak and tired, he did not want to be bothered. Hughes tore the yellow page from the legal-sized pad, folded in thirds with thin, feeble fingers, creased it with inch-long nails, and handed the note to his aide, George Frankham, who was standing by his bedside. Frankham, in turn, read the note, folded it once again, and left the room without speaking. All right, yes. So, um, look, I'm interested to find out. I won't get you to tell me the answer because I want to go and have a listen to that because um, I'm into people that make money and um, I want to know how he made this it. This guy was a legend. This guy was a legend, a, a very nutty sort of guy, but um, no, really good. Good read and it should be a good listen. 
yeah, good stuff. So you go, you can get a free credit at aussietechheads.com.au and um, check that out. Now, just just uh, quickly, there was a couple of people. There was uh, two two people that probably well known famous people that passed away this week. That's why you're talking about people that passed away. Just came to my mind. Now we all remember um, uh, Colonel Potter from Mash. He died yep. r- ripe old age. Didn't met. One of the the original one or the other one, the second one. The second one, the older of the two. Right. Yep. Right. Uh, I forget it. Harry Morgan, I think his name was. And so yeah, yes. he he was about ninety six. So he had a, he had a fair innings. Wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, and also someone that probably you, you probably would say got cheated a bit, dying at sixty, not old, was Roy Orbison's wife. She passed away from some sort of cancer. So um. Really. Yeah. No good. This week. Yeah. No good. She's only about sixty. So she was she was pretty full full on into um you know keeping. How his, old was he? He wasn't old either. Fifty, fifty something. Really? He, yeah, he wasn't old. He wasn't old. But um, but anyway, he died about eighty-seven, I think. Eighty-six, eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. That was twenty years ago. Yeah, he's been gone a while. Well, so Roy. she was. He must have been what about ten years older than her. Would he? Yeah, I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Well, yeah. probably. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But um, you can Google that if you want. Let me Google that for you. <laughs> No, yeah, just let me Google it. Look it up yourself, you lazy bar. <laughs> All right, so, um, so yeah, so, okay, so uh, just before then, I did mention that the uh, I am working on the new page. So, look, I'll quickly, um, I can quickly probably give you a bit of a bit of a preview if I can get the, uh, I'll do that later. The, the shortcut's not working. Great. Um, let, me, let me Google that for you. <laughs> let, me, let me Google that for you. That's right. I don't know why that doesn't work. So I make all these rash statements about I've done this, I've done that, and can't get nothing out of it. Oh, well. The, the shortcut must be in Firefox. But anyway, we'll keep going on with some stories. But the webpage, all right. people, is coming. It's nearly there. All right. Well, speaking of things that don't work, um, <laughs> Malcolm Turnbull says broadband network could be heading for a $6 billion blowout. I think we all knew that was going to yeah. happen eventually. Yes, and I think billion. we all know that he's probably underestimating the fact that at six billion, it's probably going to be closer to ten. Yeah, maybe, maybe. What's going oh. on? Look, I'm just happy that, as you would have heard, both Eric and I, th- previous weeks, we're going the new Telstra Doxus Three set up when it comes to the our areas in four days and counting. Not that we are. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah look. Also, I've re- been looking on. I've been looking on Whirlpool.net. Mm. Um, and on the, on the on the there's a there's a there's a discussion thread about the hundred megabit thingo. Yeah. And every now and again, someone will post their um, post their speeds. Yes. And I'm thinking, oh, you pricks. I know you saw you someone you sent me a copy of someone's speed test in Perth, uh, two point four up. Yep. Or something. Like that. I saw one today, two point eight eight up. So obviously they're they're not capping it. It's just whatever. What are they? How does it work? Are they just? No, no, not. Well, they are they are capping it because it's capable of one twenty up. Yeah, right. Well, what are they capping but I think it at? They're not capping it. I think they should. They they, they say the maximum is five. Uh, I'm sorry, maximum is two. But I think they're they're opening it up a little bit, and I reckon they've set their maximum at about two and a half, three, and right. most people then are getting about two and a half. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'd be good. That. Yeah, that'd be great. But I also heard, like, just sticking with the NBN, look, I saw a few of those stories this week. And to tell you the truth, I'm at a stage again where I'm just over it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm over it. because, like, But I just like having a dig at mm. the fact that it's, it is turning into a massive disaster before it's even out in yeah. 10% of the population. Because it wasn't Telstra. It is just unbelievable. Yeah, Telstra has to, they're looking at maybe going back to some negotiating table because Telstra hasn't got something done in time or something. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I can't remember what it was. It was they were supposed to be negotiating something, and it was, uh, it was supposed to be done by the twentieth of December, which is creeping up on us. Mm. Um, and, and they're thinking it won't get done, so therefore they might have to go back to the table and whatnot. And I think Telstra probably knew that was gonna, wasn't going to get done because the ND, NBN are probably asking for too many concessions, and mm. Telstra being a you know a publicly listed company that's got to answer to their stakeholders, shareholders, staff, etc. they just can't sign anything off just because the NBN wants them to. Yeah, yeah, um, that's right. And so they're probably thinking, you know what, you know, we, we just, you know, you can't control us. We are a public company and we will mm. act as such. Well, and they, so if we don't like the commercial terms, then mm. we're not going to sign it. Well, first and foremost, like their, their responsibility is to the shareholders. So, 
yeah, and, first and foremost, and their customers and their, and their employees. Hmm. And unfortunately, it's not the general public. <laughs> but anyway. Not, that's right. So anyway, a late-breaking report on, if you go to Malcolm Turnbull's um, website um, this afternoon, I didn't want to post it because it's a very long article, but he, the, the uh, what is it, the competition dude... Or, or I think it was not the ACCC, it was something, the Productivity Commission or oh, Competition yes. something or other, There's a few of came them. down late this afternoon on a decision and that basically stated that NBN is acting like a monopoly. Yes, yep. And they are, and they are in breach of pretty much everything that they said they wouldn't do yeah, with, regard right. to, with regards to um, how they're going to treat the people that they're selling access to, mm. um, that they, they are using something along the lines of they are using public money, which is basically you're raising money from the public, you sell bonds, right, in your treasury bonds, yeah. which is basically government debt, yep. and, um, at, and paying interest at a very low rate because, you know, government treasury bills are usually lower than, you know, bank term deposits. Mm. And you're using that funding, that cheap funding from the taxpayer – to um, drive out whatever it is that they said. Well, what, what do they say exactly? They were saying that, that because of the, your low cost of capital compared to the real world where everyone else can't get treasury bond rates, that you're in an unfair position yeah. and you can offer um, cheap or, um, you know, sort of Just, like, yeah. you can undercut people yeah. basically yeah. because you've got, you've got a cheaper cost of capital than everybody else and that's, that's monopolistic behaviour. And, so, um, yeah, once again, who knows where it's going to end? Oh, you know. And he's finding his parting shot was um, at Senator Conroy. He said, and it's no wonder Senator Conroy was stalling for ages and was arguing against having this commission look at the nitty gritty of this of mm. this plan. Yeah, and he's right. Yeah. So look, I just saw it again, and I thought, look, if I can get me two point two or two up, I'm, I'm going to be as happy as a pig in mud for probably another two years while my contract's on. So, um, oh, look, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, in four days' time, it'll be NBN who? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's who, right. What? Well, NBN, for the, for the National rest... Buffhead <laughs> Network. For the rest of Australia, who will continue to feel the pain, you know, I, I can I can sympathise. But um, That's right. Build, yeah, build a bridge. Yeah, move, move to the Goldie, move to Sydney, that's right. Melbourne, to Sydney. Perth, Brizzy, whatever. Um, that's right. And you'll be able to get some of this action faster. Now, dot triple X, pornography web domains. <laughs> <laughs> they they've gone on general sale. One hundred. So which which one have you applied for? Uh, Big Glen. <laughs> dot triple X. <laughs> Big Glen. So, One hundred thousand addresses have already been purchased in a restricted sale. The first pages went live in September. Now it's triple X website. Uh, which details how interested parties can register the domain has received nearly 1 million visitors. The website lists all the registrars. That's where you can purchase the .XXX domain. They're not cheap, by the way. And um, the pricing will be set by the individual registrars, as is now with .com and whatevers. So companies and individuals that do not want their name associated with pornography will be able to pay a once-only fee of between $150 and $300. So say if there was a... Eric Franco porn star and Eric didn't want his <coughs> name associated with it, he could pay the whatever, one hundred fifty to three hundred dollars and secure that domain well yes yeah, or take that domain out of the for sale listings. Do you want to see that graphic? There you go. And I would say at a guess that one hundred and fifty percent of the people applying will do exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna see that graphic again? There it is. See? There you go. Things you miss out on if you're on the podcast. Woo! All right. Now, what else, <laughs> what else have we got going here? I know her. Oh, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know her. Um, now, what have we got here? Coles. Coles stepping into getting some more technology on the PayWave system. Now, <clears throat> you know that everyone knows the PayWave. Contactless card yep. payment available at Coles from February next year. Uh, all stores will be equipped with it by July. So good on them. Uh, upgraded payment terminals are to be installed. Allow Coles customers to do away with entering PIN numbers. Well, what a what a drain that would be. Well, what a drain it has been, isn't it? You know, putting PIN oh, numbers. Oh yeah, it's so in hard. Oh my God. Well, I this, think just, of it. this is just Coles' way of letting you part with your cash quicker. 
Yeah. So v- Visa for, the, for for substandard products. Visa Country Manager Australia, Vipin Kalar. Vipin Kalra. Vipin. The Australian shoppers are clearly embracing contactless payments. In fact, we have seen a hundred and fifty percent increase in the number of Visa pay waves transactions in the September quarter. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> Vipin, but did you call me today? <laughs> I had a couple of calls. Yeah, I knocked on your door. You sent me on on my way. Did I sign up to electricity with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, no, that's right. That's right. You came to my door and you were going on about uh, Upas. I, I didn't know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. I don't, 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 that was my cousin Patel. Might have been your your. your <laughs> I won't say that. Okay. So anyway, what I wanted to comment with on uh, Vipin's statements was that about Australia has embraced the technology, you know, a 150% increase in the quarter or whatever Vipin just said. Um, well, I want to know, what I want to comment on is, well, we, ha, why have we embraced it? Uh, isn't it being forced upon us? We're either just using it because it's we have to. I'm sure, well, you can't go to a pay wave machine and if you've got a car that does the pay wave, you have to pay wave. They're not going to stand there while That's you're... That's right. You say, yeah, it's not, we haven't embraced it because they've, saying, they've said... Uh, given us a choice, they saying, right. "Sorry, this machine, no this choice. machine only takes pay wave." Well, they don't even ask. It's just done. Like, where, where do I? Go? I go even at Woolies. Like, yeah, you put your card in, and you're not waving it, but you still you insert your card into the machine at the, you know, those um, the yeah, self serve yeah, checkouts. The bottoms, instead of swiping it, yeah, you insert it, and you don't have to sign. And if it's under hundred bucks, you don't have to put your pin in. Like, it, it just goes approved. So I don't know how. What, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But Ruth, yeah, well, don't don't lose your card. No, you do. no. Well, that's right. So um, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, that's that's the way of the future. Well, look at it. So good on your coals. At least we we can get through your checkouts faster. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, we can get the hell out of there quicker with all the crappy shit that you sell. <laughs> that's right. Now, <laughs> speaking of other substandard, substandard fruit and veg and bloody dusty. Dusty goods that you haven't that's been on your shelf for twelve months with rat droppings on it. Oh, yum! Now, t- now Telstra has a has an issue with the iPhone, They're, and apparently this week or overnight, last night or whatever, they've pushed out a fix um, for iPhone 4S faults. There you go. Yes. Tel- has your has your uh, wife had a problem with the with this? No, not that I've been um, contacted about. No, no. It, if she's been getting dropouts, drop calls, no signal, that sort of stuff. She she's affected. No, if she, she hasn't. Then you're then you're sweet. She's been pretty right. Telstra has attributed ongoing reception issues for some iPhone S iPhone four S users uh, on its network to a hardware incompatibility issue with their upcoming LTE network upgrades. There's always issues, isn't there? But the oh, co- I can't wait. For that. Telstra- you know what I'm going to do? What I'm going to get what I'm going to upgrade my dongle when that the four G comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Why and, wouldn't you? Um, yeah. Boy, wouldn't you? Same, I'm, it's the same price I'm paying now. Yeah. Have you seen their website? No. I can't do it now because I'm on contract. But you go to their website and um, they're doing something like five gigabits up on this 4G. Yeah, Sorry. right. That's all right. Freaking believe. Yeah, that's 39 good. bucks a month, eight gigs. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, look, I'll, I don't think I can do that where I am on the Goldie. I think they're just rolling it out. There's a certain perimeter around the capital cities. Oh, you'll get, you'll get it eventually, though. Yeah, um, Telstra has have uh, Telstra users have complained of dropped calls as what we've just been talking about, inability to pick up a signal, reverting simply to SOS or emergency mode, which is uh, no good. The telco support personal, the the telco support personnel today acknowledge that its network may be at fault for some ongoing reception issues. Oh, woohoo! Someone's taking some responsibility. That's all. That's good to see. We have already started implementing this change, and they expect the glitch to be corrected post haste. Post haste. Mm. Now I've got a couple more. One more story. I've only got one more story. Did you have? I've any? got a couple. More. I've yeah. got heaps. Okay, go with one. Right. Well, Apple are in trouble in China because they they sued someone in China over the use of the iPad name, mm. and a court in southern China rejected a lawsuit by Apple that was a, that was acute. Apple was accusing a Chinese technology company of. Fringing its iPad trademark, um, but it goes on to say that the the um, o- the lawsuit over the use of the iPad name, the Intermediate People's Court in the southern boomtown of Shenzhen, rejected Apple's complaint on Tuesday against ProView Technology, 
Um, and I'm getting a buzz back. Skype's playing up again. All right. So what we'll do is we'll just have a little uh, rest. <laughs> we'll, we'll come. We'll come back post haste. Hold there. Just, just hang up and go back in. Yeah, I'll tell you. It never came back after you um, played the audible. What do you mean? So oh, I didn't. It, 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 it started playing up since then. Yes. It, as soon as you played the audible, it, it became all staticky and hissy. Never, never regained itself. I don't know why. I don't know what else you were, what buttons you were touching. Nothing. I just all I did was I turned up the auxiliary volume on that channel. To oh, play okay. It and then, then I turned it back down when it was finished. Yeah, that's crap. why you couldn't hear me. That's crap. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll ring you back. All right. Ringing Eric back. Bing 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 bing. Because we've been going for an hour. Yep. That's why. Jerks. <laughs> all right. So, so let's continue. But you've gone um, all soft again now. Just speak into the microphone, like right Hello. in Hello. Hello. Yeah. Is that all right? It's, it's not soft again, right? Yeah, it's not as loud as it was. Well, I haven't touched anything. <laughs> Um, let me have a look here. No, I'm, I'm, all my volumes are right. Um, uh, actually, just tap yeah. on your microphone. It is a bit soft. And I've got it on 100%. Right. Okay, how's that? Hang on, wait a second. How's that? Yeah, that might be a bit better. No. No, nothing. Wait a minute. Okay. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Not as loud right. as it was. Testing one, two, yes, three. Yes, yes. Good, 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 good. Good. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Here we go. What button was that? Uh, one of the... It's the auxiliary channel on the mic button, which okay. I hadn't touched before. I had to turn it up now when, from where it was before, and I didn't have to do that before. Mm, okay. Stupid thing. <laughs> hang on. All right. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I just got to do another track. Okay. Uh, do you know where to come back in? Yep. Okay, ready? Yep. And go. Yeah, so we were just saying, in the lawsuit over the use of the iPad name, the Intermediate People's Court in southern China um, rejected Apple's complaint against ProView technology. It said, ProView lawfully registered the iPad trademark as long ago as the year 2000 for products in a number of countries, including China, including China, Thailand, uh, Mexico, South Korea, Singapore, and Indonesia, and Vietnam. Mm. Now, so basically, I see Apple wants to uh, is selling the iPad in China, and then they've realised, oh, there's someone's got iPad in China. We're going to sue them. But what they didn't realise is these people owned the iPad name 10, 12 years ago. So as a result, ProView are now suing <laughs> Apple for 1.5 billion dollars for infringing their copyright by selling a product called iPad in a country where they've got the rights for the name. Oh, no. But but is the – so ProView, what what was their iPad? What Was it a technological device? Uh, let me see. It says that here. Or was it a, uh, a lady's accessory? No, it was a, you know, they're a technology company. Right, right. ProView Technology. Okay, right, well, I right. suppose they can, make, they can make shavers too, I suppose, can't they? Yes. I suppose um, they could. But, um, yeah, because I was just wondering, because you know how, like, just because you own the, the rights to, say, iPad, you might only own if, the yeah, rights if, to T-shirts. If it's in a completely different yeah. industry, you Class. have no right to sue. But I yeah. think that it's in the same industry, and mm. that's why they're suing. But apparently Apple bought the name in 2006. That's right, yes. From a, um, 
from uh, where is it? Because see, see, see. it was because they bought the name. They bought iPhone as oh, well. Oh, here, I Proview. Here we go. Proview made an unsuccessful, un- unsuccessful attempt to sell a tablet in the year two thousand yeah, called okay. the iPad. Right, right. And it had oh. registered the trademarks for iPad in the in e in the EU, European Union, China, Mexico, South Korea, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam. In 2006, the Financial Times said Proview Electronics agreed to sell Apple the global trademark for the iPad name yeah. for fifty three thousand dollars. But according to Proview, the two companies had subsequently dis- disagreed about whether that deal included China. Yeah. Okay. So right. Proview saying no, no, we never sold you China. Mm. We sold you everything else. Yeah, yeah. So now, well, that now they're they're countersuing for one point five billion. That'll look, be an interesting result. Look, all the, this stuff. It's just so aggressive, isn't it? Like it's just very aggressive. Well, I suppose if, if you don't protect it, you'll lose it. That's the that's the intellectual property law that we we have mm. to live with. Yeah, and that's yeah. a well known fact. If you don't fight to keep a name, it's automatic. You you'll lose it. Mm. Which I suppose is fair enough. I suppose that's fair enough. But uh, have you uh, have you got another couple of stories? We've got a little bit time, little bit of time to go. Yeah, yeah. You just wait right there, my friend, and I'll just if I can get my screen, my mouse over to my screen. There we go. Because so I've got I've got one more to end the show off with. All right, here we go. Yeah, who wants to know what most people were talking about on Facebook in two thousand and eleven? Um, I don't know, Brad Pitt. No, one to ten, ranked one to ten. Okay, this will be quick. No, no. No editorial, no comment. Number one, death of Osama bin Laden. Right. Number two, the Green Bay Packers defeating Pittsburgh Steelers to win the Super Bowl. Number three, the Casey Anthony trial. You know, remember? Do you remember, do you remember that one about how she, um, you know, the child died of neglect and then she got off on a murder charge or something? Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay. Number four, Charlie Sheen's breakdown and the talk of mm. tiger blood. Jeez. Mm, right. Number five. The death of Apple's co-founder Steve Jobs. Yeah. Number six, the royal wedding. Um, number seven, uh, Amy Winehouse. The uh, death of Amy Winehouse. Uh, number eight was the Call of Duty, the release of Call of Duty: Modern Warfare, the game. Um, number nine was the military operations in Libya commencing, and number ten was Hurricane Irene. There you go. Yeah. Well, there you go. I just um, talked about things on uh, Facebook. I think Google yeah. might have released a top ten list just recently too, or um, some of the, yeah. The, I think the, I did see a top ten, but all these top ten lists start to come out around this time of year, around about Christmas, New yes, Year. Yes, I've got the Google one here too. If you want to see that, yeah, just give us I've the top Google. top five. Oh, well, this is the Australian one. Yes, Australians yes. apparently more more interested in the release of the iPhone than in Cyclone Yazi or Japan's tsunami. <laughs> That doesn't See, mean we're, nothing. We're a though, compassionate does it? bunch, aren't we? Ah, uh, some all these people died in Japan. When's my iPhone coming? <laughs> I hope that doesn't hold up production. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, a... <laughs> that's right. I hope those. I hope it doesn't. It didn't. It didn't destroy the chip factory. That's right. What chip? No more chips. What am I going to eat? <laughs> so, it's, it's, uh, here we go. Here. Okay. The rumored iPhone five was given number one spot. News on Libya coming in second. Cyclone Yasi third. Um, and rounding off the top ten was uh, news on uh, Super Rugby, Qantas, Charlie Sheen, Justin Bieber, Facebook. What else? That's about it. All right. That's for the Australian Google, not the anything else. Right, right. All right. Well, I'm gonna. Do you want me to do my story? Have you, go for it. Have you done? Are you done? No, I've got a couple more, but you can go. Oh, I'll just do a couple. Do you do them quick? All right. Uh, we've done the Audible one, so that's gone. Maybe that was the last one. I've got the you, you've talked about the Microsoft App Store, so that's yep. cool. Uh, done, no, I'm done. All right. That's it. Okay. Well, my last one is an app. It's available on all platforms. Well, well Apple and Android, the main ones, I guess. And it's just released today. And it's probably good, not a bad little idea. It's released the federal government's app. Uh, the federal government has released a smartphone application to provide quick and easy access to information about emergencies and disasters across the country. Uh, it's called Disaster Watch. So when you search for it, it's uh, no space. It's one word, Disaster Watch. The app can be downloaded for free and contains the latest public information via a direct feed from the emergency response teams. Now, I've downloaded it. It does work on Android and iPad. All right, iPhones. Disaster Watch. Is the Labor government 
f- stuff ups on there as well. That's a disaster. Watch if it's <laughs> waiting that, to happen. That might be in the feed somewhere. But uh, yeah, yeah, look, <laughs> and thankfully there's no disasters going on at the moment, and all it is is just some um, weather reports. So um, right, yeah. But it looks like you know when there's a, a full blown fire or yep. flood or something, yeah, yep. so it could come in yep. handy. Good idea. Good yeah. idea. Yeah, well done, someone in the federal government. Obviously, no one in the prime minister's cabinet came up with that. Because, as you'd probably know, like in a say in a flood or whatever storm, you got no power, but your little iPhone probably still has access to the internet, and so you'd be able to get some for, a, li- for a few hours. Yeah, yeah. Mm, that's so right. that's that's good, 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 good. All right, well, excellent. We've we've hit the end of the show. We're bumping yes. up against the end, so we'll we'll call it we'll call it a we'll call it a podcast. Put in the can. Wrap it up. It's uh, Yeah, that's right. Another one in the can. So thanks to everyone that downloads the podcast, everyone overseas and especially those in Australia because we appreciate your support. And uh, keep downloading. Try and get to the YouTube channel and give us a few hits over there. Even though my AdSense account is deleted and suspended and whatever, still can't <laughs> get onto Google about that. But anyway, such is life. Such is life. You know, I've moved on, sort of. But, uh, yeah, so get onto the YouTube.com uh, slash The Secret Hub and, and have a quick look at the videos. Uh, the head's going to be back next week. He's collated a few more uh, stories and questions, so he's going to be back. He's got, he's, got some, he's got a few things to talk about as well. Uh, so the head next week and we'll see what happens with Will. I'm not sure if he's back's going to be – if Will's back is back or what's going on there. I'll have to, I'll have to give, him a, give him another ring through the week and just make sure he's going all right because he's been off for a while, hasn't he? I don't know. I he can't has remember. been a- Oh, he hasn't been tweeting either. No, I can't remember what the last time he was on the show. Actually, it's been that long. So get well soon, Will. And um, yeah, whatever. Get, get well. All right. So thanks, Eric. Thanks for dropping in. We'll probably see you next no week. And uh, don't forget, yep. c- coming up after after tonight on live.thesecrethub.com, you can wa- you can have a listen to Chewing the Fat. That's with Eric and myself, and also available on the YouTube. Uh, what address, Eric, on the YouTube for that? Uh, YouTube forward slash uh, YouTube dot com forward slash CTF Studio seventy one. All right, and you can contact Eric at Twitter on the Twitters at Eric Franco and E R E R I K F R A N C O. And on the email at Eric at AussieTechHeads dot com dot au. Me and Will Glenn or Will at AussieTechHeads.com.au. I'm on the Twitter, at AussieTechHeads. And also on the Skype during the show, Aussie Tech Heads. Sign up to the Skype and call in and let us know what's going on live. All right, until next week, it's a very goodbye and we hope you enjoy your week. Ta-da for now.